Hey everybody, it's Daniel. Welcome back to Spain to Go, the best podcast in the entire multiverse for all things Spain. This is episode 40. I read at one point that 99% of podcasts don't make it to episode 20. Here we are at episode 40. I'm very happy that you are here listening with me. I appreciate you. Today, we've got a little roundup of the results of the municipal and autonomic elections here in Spain. I'm not really a party politics type, so I don't have a ton to say about it, but in case anyone's following me for their Spanish news, let's talk about the municipal and regional elections that happened over the weekend, May 28th, 2023 specifically. Let's start with two of our most media-friendly politicians. Once again, Isabel Díaz Ayuso won the Madrid community with a bit more than 47% of the votes. She is very popular. That 47.1 or 47.2% or whatever it is gives her an absolute majority of the seats in the Asamblea de Madrid. With so many different parties, there's a bit of a discrepancy between the number of votes and the number of seats. There's a disproportionate disproportionate advantage for the most voted parties. And so you can get a majority of seats without a majority of votes. The way they assign the seats is called the Daunt method. That's after the Belgian lawyer and jurist who came up with it. Um, The spelling D apostrophe H-O-N-D-T. This is something that a lot of European uh, parliaments use as their calculation for how many votes will be translated into how many seats in parliament. Thomas Jefferson, one of our American founding fathers, came up with a similar system, wrote about it in a letter to George Washington, and um, it was independently invented by this Daunt fellow up in Belgium. Anyway, the result is that uh, with 47%, Ayuso has an absolute majority of seats in the Asamblea. José Luis Martínez Almeida also won another term as mayor of Madrid. He's from the Partido Popular like Ayuso, and it looks like Madrid is happy with the center-right leadership. The community of Madrid, or the Comunidad de Madrid, if you prefer, is one of Spain's 17 autonomous communities. It contains the city of Madrid, as well as many smaller cities and towns. It extends all the way up into the mountains. So it's a fairly large geographical area with a lot of stuff outside what you would consider to be Madrid capital. Ayuso runs the government of the Comunidad and Almeida runs Madrid's city hall. These things like the autonomous communities, provinces, etc. tend to come up on the Spanish citizenship test if you're ever planning on taking that. I have taken it recently and I'll hopefully have more information about the process of Spanish nationality coming soon. Anyway, I'm going to be honest here. I like Ayuso. She's the only Spanish politician I have seen who has a high level of charisma, ever. She has a lot of charisma. You don't have to like her to think that, but I respect charisma. Anyway, most people I know don't like her very much, despite her massive popularity among the voting public. Then again, I've never heard any of the haters make an actual argument against her. They just get angry anytime someone mentions her name. I'm still waiting to hear exactly what she's done that's so terrible. I'm sure there's a long list of things, but nobody seems to know what they are. Up here in Barcelona, on the other hand, our much beloved mayor Ada Colau got third place in the election behind Javier Trias, who was mayor previously from 2011 to 2015. 
and Jaume Colboni of the Partido de los Socialistas de Catalunya, apologizing if I mangle any regional names here. Jaume is, is the same as Jaime, I guess. Jaume Colboni. Anyway, the Partido de los Socialistas de Catalunya is apparently associated with, but not the same thing as the PSOE, the general Spanish Socialist Party. Spain has a lot of regional parties, and it complicates things a bit. Javier Trias, who got first place, tends to be popular among the very rich and apparently others. I think small business owners like him a lot because he was pro-business. Anyway, you can't get elected with the votes of the rich alone, so I guess he has enough popular backing out there. He got 20-something percent. Jaume Colboni got almost the same, a little bit less, 21% or something like that. He has spent some time as deputy mayor under Colau, and Colau got third place. So, in the end, nobody got anything close to a majority up here. The parties have to negotiate to see if they can make a coalition of some kind. Either way, it looks like Colau won't be mayor again. Elsewhere in Spain, the Partido Popular seems to have done pretty well. Vox on the far right is growing too. And Ciudadanos, a party that had a lot of people sort of excited several years ago, seems to have mostly disappeared. They've actually announced that they won't even be presenting a list of candidates for the next election. Which brings us to the big news. National elections will be on... July 23rd. I really think I'm probably just adopting Spanglicisms by saying national elections in plural. I guess it's just one election, isn't it? Anyway, the national election will be on July 23rd because the day after the municipal and regional election, Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez announced that he was moving up the national election to July 23rd. They were originally scheduled for late this year, not actually on a schedule yet, but they were originally supposed to be probably in December. Like him or not, I personally don't. Pedro Sanchez seems to be pretty good at staying in office and getting the different leftist parties to cooperate, sort of, at least stay away from each other's throats. Maybe early elections are part of his master plan, We will see if people still want him in office or not in just a couple of months. Anyway, the candidate for the Populares is called Alberto Núñez Feijó. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. It's a name from Galicia, and I don't have a TV, so I don't actually hear these things. I mean, I could obviously go on YouTube if I wanted to watch Spanish news, but I'm not a big TV or video news person, I'm happy to read about it in La Vanguardia and El País. Anyway, Feijo, Feijo, whatever you want to call him, hasn't made any huge impression on me so far. He's tall and gangly, a bit goofy looking, but that doesn't say much about how he'd run the country. At the same time, there are negotiations to see just how many parties will be running on the left of the PSOE end of things. I barely keep track, but all the former Podemos parties need to see if they can get together this time or if they'll be running separately. It's actually pretty confusing. We had for a while Izquierda Unida, which was a group of leftist parties, including communists, etc., you know, Greens or whatever. Later, with the Quinte M movement during the Great Recession, we got the new party Podemos, which, after a few years, fractured into various regional Podemos parties. Here in Barcelona, we have Barcelona en Comú, which is uh, has its headquarters next to my gym. But... They apparently didn't do massively well in the Barcelona election. Um, Mas Madrid did pretty well up in 
Madrid or down in Madrid or over in Madrid, if you prefer. And elsewhere, I'm not really sure. There's a new party called Sumar that Yolanda Diaz, the vice president, vice prime minister, deputy prime minister, let's call her vicepresidente primero del gobierno, or possibly primera in her case. Anyway, Yolanda Diaz has started this party, which is hopefully going to unite a lot of the leftist sort of splinter groups. It's called Sumar. We'll see if any of them even join it. That's a separate question. An update on what I was talking about last time, the Ocupa movement around Spain. A judge has ordered the eviction of the people living in La Ruina, one of the squatted buildings in Barcelona's Bonanova neighborhood. You can listen to episode 39 for all about that. Anyway, it looks like the judicial order needs to be ratified by someone else. They're waiting for a sentencia firme, a firm sentencing. I don't know what that means. The Spanish legal system is infinitely mysterious, and I'm not a lawyer. Anyway, it seems like it could be a while before anything is done. In theory, though, the Ocupas are going to be evicted at some point. Here on my street, the residential Ocupas living in the old bakery are still there, and they're apparently doing fine. The protest and the counter-protest that I decided not to go to the other night about the Ocupas um, ended without major incident. The police identified some anarchists throwing eggs at people, which, as far as I can tell, isn't actually a crime. They were identified and released. In other news, I have no idea how Spanish people choose a political party to vote for. I've been here for almost half my life. Soon enough, it will be 20 years, and I still don't have any clear preference for one party or another. Like I said, I like Ayuso, but then again, I liked Zapatero back in the day, socialist, who was prime minister when I arrived. Zapatero seemed friendly, at least he became unpopular when the recession started, and he was denying that we were in recession for a couple of years when it was obvious to everyone that we were totally in recession. After that, I spent several years during the recession not liking Rajoy and his government, but suddenly I decided I liked Rajoy a lot when he took a hard line with all of the unconstitutional Catalan referendum nonsense. Pablo Iglesias always seemed like a creep. Personally, I wouldn't want to be in the same room as him, and uh, his general creepy vibe has made me not like the Podemos and other far-left parties. I guess I probably have other reasons why I don't like the far-left parties. Starting a small business of your own, like I did several years ago, will definitely make you less uh, amenable to the ideas of, you know, communism and stuff like that. So I'm not a huge fan of any of that. Currently, I don't like Pedro Sanchez for the moronic COVID lockdowns he forced on all of us, and for being soft on the Catalan independence types, I think people who do unconstitutional things should get what's coming to them. Does anyone really know how politics works? I consider myself to be pretty uninformed, so I try to limit my number of strong political opinions. However, I've talked to plenty of people who are obviously wrong about even the basics, what party thinks what etc. But then they have plenty of strong opinions. Personally, I think that defining an election between career bureaucrats who have never had a real job as some epic struggle of good versus evil is a scam. They are bureaucrats. They don't care about you. Do something else with your life. But that's me. I guess I just don't like politicians. What do you think? You can hit me up on the blog expatmadrid.com forward slash contact. I am there. I am happy to hear from you. You could donate something to the cause, expatmadrid.com slash donate. You could subscribe to my emails and get updates whenever I bring out a new podcast. You could give me a five-star rating 
on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to podcasts. You could subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, etc. There's a lot of things. Follow me on Instagram. I don't know. Whatever you want. I'm happy that you're here. I've got a few things in the works for future articles and episodes, so check those out. It helps if you're subscribed. Anyway, I hope you have a great day wherever you are in the world, and hasta la próxima. Bye.